uh, data management software that was publicly released in 2007 and has been developed since 2006 by the Open Knowledge Foundation. Uh, our first keynote speaker today was a representative from the Open Knowledge Foundation, or OKF. Um, and the Open Knowledge Foundation have been leading the development of this data management system. Um, and CCAN uh, is an open source software project, um, and it is the single most widely used data management system, um, I believe, uh, for publishing open data. Um, it is the system behind data.gov.uk, uh, the system behind data.gov in the US, the system behind the, U the EU's um, open data portal, uh, and it's been widely adopted internationally by public bodies and government departments for publishing open data. Um, so as an open source project, um, it's a fairly mature project. Um, it has, uh, at any one time, 20 or so developers working on it and contributing towards it. Um, and um, it's an extremely flexible uh, system, as you'll see from, uh, from my paper. Right. Um, at the University of Lincoln, I ran, we just completed a project called the Orbital Project. Um, uh, the URL is there, orbital.blogs.lincoln.ac.uk. Um, and uh, about halfway through the project, we decided to adopt CCAN for an institutional research data management system. Um, and uh, you'll find in the paper and on our project website uh, a great deal of information about the decision-making process around that. So I suppose the paper uh, and my brief talk now is really aimed at institutions that are just starting out with research data management and are thinking, do we use ePrints, do we use DSpace, you know, what do we use? Maybe, maybe you use CCAM. Um, CCAM is not perfect for research data management. It wasn't and hasn't been developed for research data management. It's been developed for publishing open data. Um, and research data management, um, as we found out in our project, and as you all know, uh, involves a great deal more than just simply publishing open data. Um, and um, we went through a requirements gathering exercise, and then we also held a requirements gathering exercise in London, focusing specifically on CCAN. Uh, and there were over 40 people attending, it was fully booked, a great deal of interest in the UK about using CCAM for research data management. And we spent a whole day doing a requirements gathering exercise around research data management and then analysing CCAM to see how well it fit. Um, so again, the paper, even if you're not interested in CCAM, the paper offers a fairly good list, over 70 um, generic research data management requirements uh, for software. That may also be useful to you. Um, but research data management, um, as we all know, is a fairly new term, but it, it's actually quite an old practice. Um, many of us who are archivists or librarians, in one way or another, have been um, managing data for some years, if not decades. Uh, and when we look at the requirements for research data management, they range from anything from a, basically a virtual research environment, digital asset management, digital curation, archiving and publishing. Um, so research data management is, is a fairly crude term, I think, um, and we need to recognise that uh, there, are, there are software tools that are, are good at doing one aspect of research data management, but not necessarily uh, meeting all requirements. Um, the development of CCAN started in, 2000, in 2006, it was publicly released in 2007, and in 2007 CCAN was just a catalogue. Um, you could not upload data to it, you just registered the existence of data held elsewhere. Okay? So it's a catalogue, and it can still be used just as a catalogue. You don't have to upload the data to CCAN. Then in 2011, storage facilities were added to it. 
So it became a repository. And then last year, a data store, uh, a PostgreSQL relational database, uh, a data store was added to CCAM. So that you, it can now um, ingest tabular data straight into a database over its APIs. Also, if you upload some data, say a spreadsheet, you can select whether to have that spreadsheet converted and, and ingested into the data store. If it's in the data store, there are visualization tools built into CCAM for previewing the data and doing some um, uh, uh, manipulation of the data. Um, so it's a catalogue repository and a data store. Uh, and this, the, this development very much reflects the sponsorship that the OKF has received um, for um, the development of CCAM. Um, you know, a number of projects have talked about sustainability today. Well, the OKF and CCAM also have to remain sustainable. Uh, and that has been through um, uh, the interest of uh, a wide number of public um, government bodies uh, effectively paying for CCAM development. Um, and so one of the main points that I make in my paper is that um, if CCAM is to become a, a comprehensive system for research data management, then the academic community has to pay for it, uh, either in cash or in developers and developer time. And this is something I, need, I think that we need to, uh, to organise ourselves and we need to lead and should not expect the Open Knowledge Foundation to lead for us. Um, but it, it is clear, uh, in 2010, data.gov.uk um, was uh, launched in the UK uh, and the development around that time in 2010 ramped right up for CCAM. Uh, and so you can see that, that uh, when money is being, uh, is being invested in the development of CCAM, uh, when there is sponsorship in terms of its development, a great deal of activity happens um, and, and that's very evident in the um, uh, uh, development of the features of CCAM. So the emphasis so far has been on publishing and discovery and reuse not curation and not preservation. So CCAN is not, uh, you know, I'm in a room full of archivists and librarians, CCAN is not an archival tool. Uh, it's a data publishing tool. Um, certain steps are being made towards it being uh, a data management tool, in, uh, I think in terms of what an archivist or a librarian might, ex might expect in terms of data management. Um, but it, it is still lacking. Um, this is my last slide, and it's just a summary of uh, the conclusions of my paper. Um, CCAM is the de facto standard uh, for publishing open data. Um, it has a large community, very high-profile high projects, uh, and it's relatively mature open source software. And one of the choices that we have to make working in institutions and selecting software is the risk involved. Um, there may be software that appears to do a great deal more. Uh, I'm actually not aware of any, but uh, there may be. But we also need to consider you know, how sustainable the software is, what, are the support, um, what is the commercial support available um, around the software. That's the first thing my IT department would ask. Um, and and in, overall, I think CCAN presents a fairly low risk option. For, for institutions. Um, I like to think of it as a technology platform. Um, it is open source. Uh, it has very, very rich APIs. Much more functionality is available via its APIs in its web user interface. So while the web user interface appears quite simple, a great deal more can be done with uh, CCAN programmatically. Uh, and the work that we've been doing at Lincoln is not really CCAN development, it's, it's CCAM integration uh, through its APIs with other systems. Um, uh, and also, um, it's modular, so it has an extension system, so that um, you know, if we want, uh, I don't know, a specific academic uh, feature adding to it, say OAI PMH or something like that, 
um, then you probably develop an extension for it so that it, it doesn't necessarily affect the core of the software. Um, one thing I think might be useful, we haven't done it, but is to develop scenarios for how CCAM may fit into uh, the OIS uh, functional model. Um, and I think that would help us identify you know, its strengths and its weaknesses. Um, one of the other recommendations I make is that there is a, 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 a the, the relationship between the Open Knowledge Foundation and the academic community is, is, is developed too. Um, there are a number of academics involved in the Open Knowledge Foundation uh, and they reciprocally, reciprocally receive support from the OKF. But I, I do think um, because the objectives of the Open Knowledge Foundation and the higher education community are so similar, um, that institutions and uh, our funders should step up uh, and offer formal support. Um, as I've said, research data management is new as a term, but data curation, preservation and publishing is not new. Um, there's a great deal of experience in this room, decades of experience, about how to manage data. Um, and I think collectively, um, we have a great deal to offer to the development of CCAN and, and its community that uh, has already been established. Uh, but as I said, I, I do think that CCAN and its use for RDM should, should be led by us. Uh, and I know that the Open Knowledge Foundation will welcome that. So I, that's the end of my um, discussion. It, uh, I do hope that some of you read the paper. Um, and it's available for comment at the moment. Um, before I put it on our blog. So if in the next week you have any questions, you can leave comments on the paper and I'll try and get back to you uh, about it. Um, perhaps I could take questions, if anybody has any questions about CCAN or, or about how a relatively small university like ours goes about um, you know, deciding on research data management software. I think some of you are probably uh, also at the same stage. Oh yes, question.